Characteristics of trigonometric functions. Question 2. Complete the table below. So here we are trying to really understand the equation and write down its characteristics. Now the equation given to us is y equals to 3 sine of 4 x minus 25 degrees minus 2. So we need to find what is the amplitude, period, phase shift and vertical shift for this particular function. So amplitude. Amplitude you can straight away read from this point that is the amplitude right let me first write down a general equation in this form and explain you all these terms right so in general we can write y equals to a the amplitude of the function the function could be sine or cosine times k and within bracket x minus p the phase shift plus q in some books we are writing d here and c there now a is your amplitude straight the value goes here right k is number of waves in 2 pi or number of waves in 360 right that is k and normally k is related to period as 360 divided by time period so we can write time period as or you could write this as time period as 360 degrees divided by k so that is how k and time period are related okay p is the phase shift so you can read from here phase shift is 25 and q is vertical shift so vertical shift is q from this equation so so answering this question is literally reading the equation in the right order that is what it is okay so let's compare it so we got three signs so the function is sine right it could be cosine as given here k is 4 for us and p the phase shift is 25 and the vertical shift is minus 2 so now we can write down all our values it's as simple as that right so 3 goes here time period you need to calculate see because k value is given to us not the time period so we can calculate it as 360 divided by 4 perfect and 360 divided by 4 in degrees will give us 90 degrees right those of you who are working in radians well this is not in radians so degrees is good enough good for radians will be 2 pi divided by k okay now let me write that also for radians it will be 2 pi divided by k now phase shift is this value if you compare this is minus p minus 25 so the phase shift is 25 degrees and plus q minus 2 vertical shift is minus 2 units right that is how it is so similarly you can read this and write down your answers but i've purposely given you do you find a difference here yes there is we need to factor three out to make it like this if you don't do that you may get this value wrong so let's do it we'll write this as minus two cos of so we'll put a square bracket factor three out x minus 60 divided by 3 is 20 degrees do you see that plus 1 and now you should write down your values and yes minus 2 so amplitude remember I forgot to tell you that is always positive right how far do you go it's kind of a distance don't write minus that could be a mistake just write the absolute value of a right so so let me write this here so this is absolute value of a not just a right and the period for us will be 360 degrees divided by k right if you're comparing with this equation phase shift is the value p and the vertical shift is q that is what you have to get from the equation so that's reading our equation and understanding right so time period will be here 360 degrees divided by 3 which is 120 degrees for us phase shift is 20 now we say 20 we should actually say 20 to the right that means plus right so we say 20 20 degrees right but if we write 20 it means to the right also now vertical shift is plus one so it's one unit up so there's no need to write plus but kind of understood right now i want to give you a question here and my question is you know the phase shift is this the amplitude is this can you give me 
the maximum and minimum value of this function. So I want to, you to give me maximum value and minimum value for this function. Also for this, okay, you need to calculate maximum value and minimum value of this function, correct? Now, in case you land into difficulties or have doubts, you can always post your comments. Or example 5 or 6 will kind of tell you how to find maximum and minimum value for a function, okay? One more exercise is, which is finding x and y intercepts. So following examples will also teach you how to find x and y intercepts provided we are given an equation. And that is how we are trying to understand our trigonometric function. And I hope by the end of this set, you will be understanding this equation fairly well. Thank you.